Hallelujah. God is great and he is worthy to be praised. Um, the song really is going to take us to our message this morning. And if I were to give this message a title, it would say, Bow Our Knees Before the Father. I remember that I challenged Greater River Church to study the book of Ephesians. Amen? I preach from it. I challenge you to study it. And as I continue to study it, God gave me this message. And before we get into our word, um, Brother Fred, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 3, um, verse 14, beginning verse 14. And we're going to do the ESV version. So if you're looking for it, I'm going to give you time. Um, don't worry about it. What I, I want to ask you this morning, um, when I was young, one of the memories, most of my memories from going, um, growing up in Haiti is kind of like fading. But one of the memories that I remember vividly is being outside. And when we have a blackout, we didn't used to have them a lot when I was growing up. I guess the country was better back then. But every now and then, like, they'll have a blackout. And all the kids will be outside. And the older people will tell jokes and, you know, like, call an answer kind of thing. They will say quick, and they will say quack, and then they'll give you, like, a riddle. And as we're sitting outside, because there was, like, no lights, no building, you could see the stars in the sky. And the sky is, like, dark. And you see the stars. And one of the things that I remember I used to do, you could, like, lay there and look at the sky and get lost into the sky because you're like wow how great is our God that you can see all these stars and you know when I get older I realize that they're like millions and millions of miles away but yet you get lost in it another thing too is like when you hear a song that is so emotional so um, sentimental if you're going through something that song will like hurt your soul um, the song um, we sang earlier, You Are Alpha and Omega, I remember the first time I heard that song, I was watching um, TV, and um, Israel and the New Breed, I remember he was in South Africa when he was singing that song, and that was the first time the song came out. And I was in my kitchen in Florida by myself, and I broke down, and I started to cry and cry and worship because the, the song just touched me. Listen, the greatness of God is higher than our words, can, can reach farther than our imagination can stretch. It's like we call it a mystery. It's vaster, bigger than our hearts can even begin to understand. Into our passage, Paul, and he wrote, he wrote this book. It's one of those books that he wrote while he was in prison. And Philippians is one of them too. So after you study the book of Ephesians, I encourage you, don't let the year come to you without studying the book of Philippians. Because when you down and out, this book will just like lift you up. So as Paul was passing through a series of pain and trial and he was on his way to prison, he discovered something that was quite wonderful and beautiful. And you ask me why he's going to prison. But he wasn't looking about what he was going to be doing in prison. He was focusing on the presence of God. And Paul realized that in the presence of God, this is where you find the greatest joy. We say the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when we find God's joy, God is happy with us. So Paul expressed God's greatness in a prayer. That is deeper than poetry. And this is our passage, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. It says, For this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might to his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, 
may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And then he said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And we're going to break down those verses. And there's like five things I want you to take away. Paul begins that he kneels. So we're going to kneel beside Paul. As seeking for more deeper experience. We want that experience. Because I remember I preached about, you know, the blessings of God. God's extravagant, unimaginable, glorious love. For us. And until you get to tap into that resources, all the things that you think you are, you're not going to be. And Paul says, for this reason, he begins that. And you, want, you can find this reason if you start reading the beginning of the chapter. It says he was on his knees. Now, Paul was a Jew. Amen. It's not customary for Jews to kneel when they pray. When Jews kneel and pray, they stand up. If you see image of Jewish people praying at the praying wall, they call it the railing wall in Jerusalem, they're standing up and they're going like this. When they finally kneel, it's desperation that they have to surrender. So prayer doesn't really have a position but Paul to show the desperation, how he wanted the, 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 the church of Ephesians to know their purpose. And do not go to a new year without knowing God's purpose for your life. And he start with this prayer for this reason. He was desperate. Because it was an awesome God, he was serving a mysterious God. God has a mysterious plan to redeem fallen men, both Jews and Gentiles. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1, 6, 12, 14, and you'll find because there's a purpose. God did not just save us to come here, look good on a Sunday, raise our hands, say shout our hallelujahs and go home on a Monday and act like nothing happened without us growing spiritually day by day. Paul did not pray. First of all, keep the, keep the passage. Don't, don't change. <laughs> Work with me. Work with me, brother Fred. I've been up since 530 because I had a session. Um, I was preaching this morning at 6 a.m. in the morning. So I'm tired. Brother Fred, you got to help me. You're going to help me preach today. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So let's note about the things that Paul did not pray for. And the things that I'm going to name, I'm not going to tell you not to pray for them. Number one, Paul did not pray for material prosperity. He did not pray for that for the Ephesian saints. He could have. He did not pray for the prevention or removal or, or relief from pain. He did not pray for the physical healing. He did not pray for the emotional or psychological well-being, though he could have. He did not pray for them to be transformed into this ecstatic spiritual experience. That's not the main focus. His prayer is shaped by the purposes of God. God. And when you know God's purpose for your life, you're going to pray according to his will. Because when we pray at the end of the prayer, we always say in Jesus name, let your will be done. Amen. Amen. Mean I'm in agreement with you. Let it be. So if you don't know your purpose and you pray, you don't know God's purpose for your life. You're praying in vain. You're going to say amen, and you're going to wonder, how come God is not giving me the things that I'm asking for? And maybe the thing that you are asking for him is not in his will. So we can come before the Father 
whenever we can, wherever we are. It's not here in this church. It's not laying down. It's not kneeling. It's everywhere we are. Our mind's supposed to be constantly on God and nobody else. So let's look closely at what Paul prayed. And that should be our prayer as well. In verse 16, he prayed for strength through his spirit. The first request is for strength and power in the inner being. Where? Inner. Not physical strength. But spiritual strength in your inner being, your innermost being. Who lives in you? Who dwells in you? As a Christian, who dwells in you, pastor? He's asking you to tap into that strength that is inside of you. Being made alive in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. That power, you already have it. That's the opposite of when you said lose, when you lose heart. He said, do not lose heart. Because why? God is inside, inside of you. And instead of giving up to the problem, the trial, the pain, the tribulation, the circumstances, he wants us to grow in the Spirit's power. Say, I'm powerful. Not because I can carry a ton of weight on my shoulder. I'm powerful because Jesus lives inside of me. And no matter what I'm going through, I have hope. Because greater is he that is in, than he that's in the. We are strengthened with might by God's spirit in the inner man. Stop focusing on the outside. Start focusing on the inside. And this morning I was preaching about um, arrogance and pride. We find out that pride is a condition of the heart. Unless our heart is renewed, there's a bunch of things we will never be able to do. Drink in the spirit of God. It says, oh, come and taste. And see how good God is. I want you to grow spiritually. We don't want to be stagnated Christian who suffers spiritual malnutrition when the food that we need and all the vitamin and all the nutrients that we need is inside of us. And that's not being conceded. Because when you have God, you have humility. Because you know you don't depend on your own strength and your own resources. You know that you, somebody got your back. So you're always ready to give God's glory because you know you didn't do it by yourself. If I'm alive today, if I'm here today, it's by God's grace. So you should never take that for granted. Ask God to grant you that your spirit will receive a new infusion of strength. That you can drink, Pastor said, you know, drink in the rivers of life. We need some spiritual IV. Hallelujah. I need some spiritual IV. Because we're walking weak and tired. We're afraid of the enemy. We're so quick to say, woe is me. Tap into the river of life, the river of the spirit of life, which is in you. It's not outside, it's in you. It's not in this building, it's in you. Ask that spirit to restore you, that you can begin to operate in God's purpose for your life. Second thing that Paul talked about in, in verse 17, part B, he said, rooted and grounded in love. The word rooted brings to mind plant. When you see a big tree, the reason why the tree is standing tall is because the roots are deep, deep in the ground. When we think about like the word rooted and grounded, we talk about a building. You cannot have a strong building without having a strong foundation because if the foundation of the house is not strong, the house will crumble. So you need to be planted, just like in Psalm 1, that tree is planted. 
in the rivers of water. It says it yields fruit in its season. It would never wither and all die because it is planted. Listen, that river is inside of you. How come you're focusing on somebody else's greatness and forget your own? When we both say we are Christian, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we share the same spiritual DNA. One of us is lacking because we ask not. One of us is lacking because we don't know what we have. If I know I am Jeff Bezos' daughter, even though I didn't work for the billions, I know my father's a billionaire, right? Why would I walk down with my head and stand by the side of the road and beg people for money? That's what we do. Spiritually, that's what we do. We doubt. Can I? Could I? I couldn't. Because you know why? We measure our spiritual growth by our material growth. And this is where we fail all the time. God says, seek me. Seek me. Seek my kingdom. Don't worry about those things. I know what you need. We need to stop asking God for material things. He knows. Do, you know, do your kids ask you for food every day? There's always food in the house, right? They might come and ask you and say, I'm hungry because they're being lazy. They don't want to make themselves a sandwich. Why are we telling God all these things when he knows? The word ground brings to mind again like building on a solid foundation. Paul used those two metaphors, plant and a foundation. It's the only thing on earth that can hold on the body of Christ together to tough time. It's being grounded in love. It's love. Do you love me? I'm not talking about like you, because you've done something nice for me. Because I want something from you, mama, I'm going to love you. No, that love is a choice. We call that love agape love. When we are grounded in love, we pray for one another. We bear each other's burden. We are grounded in love. You cannot handle life unless you have a solid foundation, unless you are rooted and grounded. Number three, in verse 18, Paul said that you have power to comprehend. That word means to understand, means to, literally means to realize. He said to comprehend with all the saints. Give the power to others to realize that we are saints. Not because we don't sin. Not because we are blameless. Because Jesus died and the judge declared us righteous. In 2 Corinthians 6.13 Paul puts it that way. He said, widens your heart. Reach out to each other. Bear each other's burden. Confess your sins to one another. This is how you're going to have a solid, rooted, and grounded foundation. In verse 19a, he said, to comprehend the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. What is knowledge? Think about that. There's knowledge and then there's wisdom. I have a friend of mine, he put it that way. He said knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom, yes, tomatoes are fruit, honey. It has seed in it. <laughs> I was like, no. But wisdom tells you that if you're having a fruit salad, would you put tomatoes in there? Right? You wouldn't. But it's a fruit. And you gain wisdom based upon the knowledge when you act on that knowledge, understanding that you receive from that knowledge 
is wisdom. This is when you can begin to apply it. It says to surpass knowledge. So all the scientific things that the world is talking about. And I believe in science because I am a scientist. If you can cook, you bake, you're a scientist. Amen? Right? <laughs> I believe in technology. I'm not going to lie. I believe in those things. I went to school. My minor in college was biology. I love science. But God's love surpassed all those things and we keep calling those things mysteries because you will never understand the death the vast thing of God's love just like I use that analogy when I was young and I look at the stars listen the galaxy that we live in we call it the Milky Way there are millions and millions of galaxies out there we're not the only one have you know that? We're not the only one. There are millions of galaxies like us. So we only use really 4% of our brain. So the mystery of God's love, we probably would never understand it until he called us home and we can ask him face to face. We can sing about the goodness of God. But do we, do we our finite mind cannot understand an infinite God? It's impossible. How can we possibly know this love that surpassed knowledge? We cannot. Paul encouraged us to pray for God to help us to learn more and more of his love. And we should make that request often. Because the more you love God, the more you understand to love who you are. And the more you love who you are, the more you can love your neighbor. It says, by this, they know you are my disciple if you do what? Love one another. How can I love you when I don't even love myself? And sometimes we use Christianity. I'm sorry I'm talking to somebody <laughs> this morning. I might be talking to myself. We use Christianity to hide behind the hate that we feel for other people, behind the jealousy that we have, behind the envy. You said, this should be my car. This should be my job. This should be this. This should be my husband. I should have the kids. My kids should be. We hide behind this. And we say, peace be with you. I love you. You can't fool me, but you cannot fool God. Whether you like it or not, God knows the intent of your heart. You know, just like I was telling my friend, I'm like, we're getting old. I'm older than I look, I know. <laughs> okay? But, mama can help me in that one. You can nip it, tuck it, tie it, put a girdle on it, put makeup on it. When you wake up in the morning, your body will tell you your age. Because you don't just pop up out of bed. You're like, ugh, my knees. Hey, man, you like my back. I used to wear like five-inch heels for eight hours a day. Now I come to church, even these little heels, I got my flats on the back. Why? This body is going to go away because it's dust is going to return back to dust. But he said he's going to give you a glorious body. And the glorious body, you need a glorious spirit to go with that glorious body. This is why we need to invest in our spiritual growth. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep saying that. Invest in your spiritual growth. The last thing Paul asked for, he said, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. It doesn't mean full comprehension of his divinity. I just told you that earlier. It's a mystery. You will never understand God's divinity because your mind cannot comprehend it. He didn't create you that way. If he did, you would have declared yourself God. But Paul prayed that you are filled with the fullness of God. Mean that, that God is in position 
possession and of control of your life. When God possess your life, he controls your life. When he controls your life, he can strengthen you. You can get the blessing. He can enrich you. Cause and effect. Not only when we are full with the fullness of God, our faith is strong and vital. It help us to reach out. It help us to minister. Like this morning, I did not want to wake up. My friend who's the pastor is doing that 40 days, and he, he called me for two weeks straight. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to stop bothering you. And then I'm like, you know, I'm going to ignore him. I kept saying to myself, I'm going to ignore him. I hope he's not listening. <laughs> I did tell him that too. And he called me while I was at work. And then I missed the call. And I'm like, you know what, I'll call him later. But as I'm putting the phone in my pocket, it dialed the number. He's like, you know what? In being your friend, one thing you told me, I have to be persistent. And I'm persistent. He's like, I'm doing this 40-day thing. And I need my friend to come and help me. And I said, what time? He's like, six. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I suffer from insomnia. This is when I'm turning. That's when I have to wake up at 5.30. And he would not, even when I told him, yes, I will, and I give him the days that I would do it, he still called me yesterday. He's like, I need to go over everything, making sure that a connection, because you can be in the comfort of your home with technology and be preaching to the world. But he was persistent. So I answered, how persistent are you? With the matters of God, how persistent are you? Jesus said, knock, seek, ask, active verb. All those things require action from our part. It's not only about like being in your room, banging your head, Lord, 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 please, Lord, 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 please, Lord, I need that job, but you never put in an application. I need to be healthy. I need to be healed. But you keep eating junk food. I need to know your power. But yet you don't read the word. You don't pray. You don't fast. I need somebody in my life. But yet you don't go out there and reach out to somebody who's in need. But yet you expect people to come to you. Who died and made you king or queen? Jesus did not die for that. He died that we might have life and life more abundantly. And when you have something good, you share. You don't just keep it for yourself. Pray for all the fullness of God himself. For God in his presence and his fullness to fill you up and flood your life. Every area of your life, every area, when you focus, because he said he breathed life into you. The most important thing for God is your spirit. Did you hear that? It's your spirit. This is what he died for, because he gave it to you, he wants it back. Just like you have a child, you feed the child, you start with breastfeeding, and then you add formula, and then you add, like, you know, cereal. In our culture, I don't know about the African culture, but the Haitian culture, if the baby's three months and keep drinking milk, you're going to find some grandma. What? No cereal? The baby's never going to sleep at night. They're always telling you, add for the food to be solid so the baby can be full and the baby can sleep through the night. You've been a Christian for five years, 10 years, 20 years, but yet you're still taking milk because you can't digest real food. Talk to me, Holy Spirit. And the last two verses, we call it the doxology. God's greatness overwhelmed Paul so much that he wrote those two verses. Can I have it up? And I want you to read them with me. It says, now to him 
who is able to do so much more than we all we ask or imagine according to his power. Where is the power at work? Where is it at work? Hey, keep going. Hmm. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generation forever and ever. Amen. When it says this church, is it talking about this building? It's talking about us. We are the church, the universal church church and I'm going to leave you with those verses he says one who does far more abundantly think about those things far more abundantly we can say this is redundant because far more mean abundantly right he wants to specify to make grace abound 2 Corinthians 8 9 to do immeasurably more we just read it, Ephesians 3.20. To bring everything under his control, Philippians 3.21. To save completely, Hebrews 7.25. To keep from falling, Jude 1.24. Yes, God will keep you from failing and falling. You don't have to worry about what the enemy is behind you. Sometimes we focus too much. On the enemy. We focus too much. We always want to cast out. We want to always. No, don't do that. Not even Michael, God's angel, fought the enemy, fought the devil. No. He already lost. He's going after you because he sends fear. Because where there's fear, there's no love. Because love does what, Pastor? Love casts out all fear. So he goes around and, 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 and sow doubts in your heart. And if God asks you to do something, right? And you think of all the reason you shouldn't do it. If fear, if one of the reason you should not do it. Because this is the tool that the devil is using. Fear. For us not to tap into the fullness of God that is within us. So he's able to keep you from falling. I'm going to encourage you, church. Praise God. Morning, noon, and night. Praise him always. Praise him for the mystery of his grace in the church. Praise him for the gifts of salvation and reconciliation because we're destined for hell. But God reconcile us back to him within Christ. Praise for the people the brother asked earlier to pray for Uganda. Pray for your country. Pray for your neighbor. Pray for your friend. Pray for your children. Pray for Greater River Church. Pray all the time. Doesn't mean that you have to have your eyes closed all the time. But if your mind is on God. You are praying all the time. Wherever you are. And when you in an attitude of prayer, you don't have time to focus on your problems. Because you have a different perspective. Even when you see the problem, you said, then sing my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great I don't even know where my rent money is coming, but how great thou art because I still have a roof over my head. How great. And when you do that, God will sustain you. When I was preparing this message, I had to ask God for forgiveness. Because I'm like, how can I preach this thing that I'm struggling with? So if this message was not for you, it will certainly for me. What a great passage. I encourage you to meditate on it. If you can memorize it because it will strengthen you no matter what situation you're in. Because in God's presence you find the greatest joy. And where is God's presence? In us.
Let us stand. Heavenly Father, we give you praise right now. We thank you, Jesus Christ, for the ultimate sacrifice. We thank you because even when you left, you sent your Holy Spirit to dwell within us. That we have power. That we are filled with God's love. You said, not by might but by the Spirit, by my Spirit, says the Lord. Father God, we want to come before your throne like Paul and bow the knee to thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done, for everything that you'll continue to do from where you took us from and where you're going to take us because you want to take us on a higher and higher place. Father God, we don't want to miss out on anything by focusing on things that are below when we should set our mind on things above because only above can keep us from falling, can present us faultless before your throne. Father God, we ask for forgiveness for our doubt. You said if we ask and we doubt, you're not going to give it to us. So strengthen our faith today, Lord God. Strengthen our faith today, Lord God. Let us not walk out this door the same way we came in, Lord God, and those who are watching us on social media. For God, you are omnipresent. You are with them as well. Touch them. We want to grow spiritually. We want to move from stage, from the milk stage to the solid stage to, for us to eat meat. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And we are begging spiritually when we have all the resources that we need in you. Father God, keep us and teach us to stay grounded and rooted in your word, which is the river of life. That we may grow, not only grow, that we may share, that we may love, that we may evangelize, that we may prophesy and sing of your goodness. Father God, we pray, not because we are worthy, but we praise in the matchless name of Jesus. To him be the glory and the honor, both now and forevermore.